Hi, okay. In this unit, we're going to talk about um, the actual fluid types, those things that you might um, get, uh, purchase, uh, and, and administer to an animal, the basic fluid types. So the first uh, consideration we're going to have in terms of selecting the type of fluid we would use would be um, what kind of fluid loss are we dealing with, and therefore what kind of dehydration might we have, would we achieve. And you can imagine that uh, when we talked about this in earlier uh, units, um, hypotonic loss would lead to hypertonic extracellular fluid volume. Isotonic loss um, it will lead to isotonic extracellular fluid and hypertonic loss, that is with a lot of salt or, or solute in, the, in it, would lead to hypotonic in, uh, extracellular fluid. So what we need to do is to recognize uh, any special characteristics to the loss because that's what we want to replace. And then we're going to have considerations over uh, acid base and then energy and then we'll have special ions and we'll, we'll talk about special ions in a, in a separate unit and even acid base uh, when we talk about additives. Simply to be complete, uh, we want to make sure we know that there is a fluid preparation called sterile water, but you never want to use it alone because it's severely hypotonic. It will lead to uh, lysing of red blood cells for all the reasons we talked about in the unit on tonicity. Um, another very basic common solution uh, that can be given uh, is called normal saline, which is 0.9% saline, and it's a safe choice. Uh, Basically, it's sodium chloride when your electrolyte status is not known. Uh, we'll show you uh, graphs, tables of constituents in each of these fluid preparations, which you probably want to uh, look at and study and, and understand uh, completely uh, as you compare it to them to extracellular fluid. Uh, saline is a specific therapy when we have significant chlor chloride loss in what's called hypochloremic alkalosis. Uh, realize that it's an acidifying solution, so if you give too much of it, you can get a, what's called a dilutional acidosis. And any sodium-containing fluid, this really is any one we're going to talk about in, in this unit, uh, for the most part, except for 5% dextrose, um, will have significant amounts of sodium. So if you give large volumes, you can lead to volume overload, if, particularly if the kidneys cannot handle the volume. So I want to talk about the balanced electrolyte solutions, and again, take a look at the tables and looking at their electrolyte compositions, the tables that come later in this unit, uh, and be prepared to go back to those tables and understand some of the pr principles we're going to talk about with each of these solutions. A balanced electrolyte solution essentially looks like ECF, okay? So when you look at the tables, look at the extracellular fluid volume, compare it to these solutions. So we have lactated ringers or acetated ringers. Um, acetated ringers may be used more in large animals. Ringers uh, solution, which does not have the alkalinizing uh, component of lactate or acetate. Normosol R, uh, which has a uh, gluconate or at and acetate in it for alkalinizing agents. And the reason these are alkalinizing is because they can all be converted um, to bicarbonate, to CO2, and therefore to bicarbonate within cells. Normosol M is a um, higher um, osmolarity solution that's used sometimes to maintain an animal, higher amounts of potassium. Um, and any of these solutions can be combined with dextrose. Uh, actually, Normosol M is a combination of Normosol R with dextrose. Uh, so these are going to be the more common balanced electrolyte solutions. They're balanced because they look like ECF. Then we have combinations of glucose and saline. So you're going to see 2.5% um, dextrose in water. You're going to, of course, just dextrose itself. And um, dextrose has no salt. It's, it's completely... Uh, it's slightly hypotonic, but it also, um, it, it, when, when metabolized and taken up into the cells, it basically delivers what's called free water to the extracellular fluid. Now, what you have to consider is that its pH is low, 
And so all dextrose-containing solutions are prepared in an, uh, an acidic formulation. Half-strength saline is hypotonic uh, because it's half of 0.9% uh, uh, saline. 2.5% uh, dextrose and half percent of or 0.45 percent saline is ice, considered to be isotonic, but when the dextrose is metabolized, it becomes hypotonic. So you have to consider the eventual fate of the dextrose. Uh, 5 percent dextrose and 0.45 percent saline initially hypertonic, and then eventually, when it's metabolized, will become um, hypotonic. And Dextrose, 5% dextrose, and 0.9% saline is, high, is quite hypertonic, and it'll eventually become isotonic. So you have to consider what happens to the animal initially, and that affects the extracellular fluid, and then eventually based on the metabolism of the dextrose. Let's now take a look at some of the commercial preparations that are considered to be maintenance solutions. I'm going to say right up front that most of these are not maintenance in terms of the, uh, the caloric requirements of an animal, nor in the amount of potassium that an animal would need. Uh, normal cell R and 5% dextrose is hypertonic um, in nature. It contains bicarbonate equivalents as acetate and gluconate, but as we'll learn in a little bit in our additive section, 5, per, five milliequivalents per liter uh, potassium given it at a, at a maintenance rate of fluids, which is, you know, let's say averages 50 milliliters per kilogram in a dog per day, isn't going to maintain that animal's potassium as so we look at that requirement. Normal cell M and 5% dextrose um, has more potassium, you can see, but it's still suboptimal. So, and it has otherwise um, acetate as a bicarbonate equivalent. Now, other, other solutions that are often used for maintenance, and I put maintenance in parentheses because they really are, are not uh, that way. 5% dextrose, because they're called maintenance because of the calories. In lactated ringers, this is hypertonic solution. And... Um, can be used as a maintenance solution, but you need to add, probably add more potassium uh, in order for that to be the case. And then the isotonic solution, two and a half strength dextrose or two and a half percent dextrose and half strength lactinid ringers. Um, and this is, again, too low in potassium to really be called maintenance. And so we would have to add potassium in addition uh, to really achieve a maintenance uh, solution. So in, in this slide, in the next slide, uh, I'm going to just show, the, show you a table that I think you probably ought to print out as you study this material and, and look at when we talk about solutions and realize the characteristics we're trying to uh, uh, understand regarding comparing these solutions to extracellular fluid. And they include the ion components, the pH, and the osmolarity. And special requirements such as do they have extra uh, calcium or magnesium? And this becomes important because certain solutions should not have drugs that put in them because they can be chelated by things like calcium um, and or magnesium and bicarbonate equivalents if we have an interest in alkalinizing the animal uh, through metabolism of, say, lactate, acetate, or gluconate to uh, CO2 and eventually bicarb. In this table, we have the less common fluid types, same uh, comparison to extracellular fluid, and I want you to note that as you get into adding dextrose it's, and into lactated ringers or normal cell R, you, you clearly get um, high osmolarity of these solutions, and so you should consider that uh, when uh, the, you're administering them over a long period of time because uh, you may end up uh, leading to fluid shifts because of that osmolarity. A special consideration for cats is that you want to avoid, and I haven't used this term before, the crystalloids. Crystalloids are basically solutions with just uh, electrolytes in them uh, and no other components. 
uh, when they have preservatives, and in some solutions will have benzoates, uh, benzoic acid in them. So you want to look at these and definitely avoid them in cats because, as you, as you learn in pharmacology, cats do not metabolize these compounds very rapidly. And they can, uh, particularly if you're giving high rates of these kinds of fluids to a cat, they can lead to the signs I'm showing here, uh, and eventually you can kill the animal because they just cannot handle uh, and metabolize these compounds. They're, why do they have uh, preservatives? Well, they have them to try to avoid bacterial growth. So after your consideration of the solute requirements, we have other requirements of an animal might have when it loses, say, blood or plasma. And that would be to replace that, that uh, lost oncotic pressure. And just to remind you what oncotic pressure is, it's the effective pressure across the blood vessel that's conveyed by membrane and permeate proteins, largely albumin, in plasma and the interstitium that fights against, if you will, as shown you in this diagram here, against the hydrostatic pressure, that's HP, that's trying to push water out of the uh, vascular space into the interstitium and, and, um, and, and potentially uh, into cause edema. So in order, if you have an animal that's developing edema, you may want to add plasma, as we'll talk about, or other replacements that look like plasma. So what are these colloids that you could administer? As I said, you can give plasma, but you have a, a limitation to the rate at which you can give it. You'd have to obviously get this from, um, and you can have it f frozen or directly from an animal uh, that's a donator, donor, uh, and you would give it at no greater than 40 to 50 milliliters per kilogram per day. Then we have synthetic compounds like dextran and hydroxyethyl starch, and I'll just list you, I would never ask for you to uh, know these dosages, or combinations of these with a hypertonic saline solution. These, uh, the combinations with 7.5% um, saline are really an attempt to try to draw fluid from the interstitium in the intracellular space into the extravascular space in an animal that might have shock. And so, but I want you to focus on the large molecular weight compounds, dextran uh, and hydroxyethyl starch, that can be added as a synthetic colloid to help uh, retain uh, fluid in the vascular space when the animal might be hypoproteinemic. So the fluid types to summarize, um, sodium is our main extracellular cation, chloride our main extracellular anion, potassium is the main intracellular cation, and phosphate, the main intracellular anion. Osmolarity, we talked about before, and tonicity. Um, these are characteristics of solutions, and they relate to the number of particles. And then we see our table of solutions. Um, in that table, we want you to think about how each of these available salt solutions replacement solutions or maintenance solutions relate to extracellular fluid volume uh, content. And so you should be able to characterize them on the basis of whether they're hypotonic, isotonic, or hypertonic, and whether they contain special ions. Uh, the ones to think about most of the time are potassium and calcium and, bi and the bicarb equivalents or precursors, acetate, gluconate, and lactate. And when you're seeing, seeking to improve or increase the oncotic pressure that might be lost from plasma. Remember, this is conveyed by proteins, so you can replace proteins with plasma from another animal or by large molecular weight synthetic compounds like dextran uh, or hydroxyethyl starch.